Welcome to OSHA and Forklift Operations. OSHA is the Occupational Safety and Health Act that applies to a wide variety of industries and specifically to forklift operations. There are many training programs related to forklifts, but this particular program explains the current regulations that pertain to forklift operations. Let's begin with some simple requirements. Personal protective equipment for use as foot, head, and eye protection shall be required for employees on a job basis. Now, what this means is your employer determines what personal protective equipment should be used for your particular job. OSHA also states that no person shall be permitted to walk beneath a suspended load, bucket, or hook. That would also include walking under any load or raised forks of a forklift. There are a number of other similar requirements that may apply to your particular forklift operations, but today let's concentrate on the specific OSHA rules 1910.178 that apply to all forklifts. First, overhead guards. High lift rider trucks shall be fitted with an overhead guard manufactured in accordance with regulations, unless operating conditions do not permit. Some operations require that loads do not have to be lifted high. They just move material from place to place and into trucks or trailers. In this case, overhead guards would not be required. If the type of load presents a hazard, the user shall equip fork trucks with a vertical load backrest extension. If you're lifting loads high, this backrest should be in place and an overhead guard should be installed on your lift truck. This is designed to minimize the possibility of the load or part of it from falling rearward. An overhead guard shall be used as protection against falling objects, such as packages or boxes, but it is not designed to withstand a falling capacity load. Naturally, there are rules and regulations pertaining to the safe handling of fuel, such as gasoline, diesel, or propane. Your organization will have specific rules relating to handling fuel. For forklifts that use batteries, battery charging installations shall be located in areas designated for that purpose. Facilities shall be provided for flushing and neutralizing spilled electrolyte, for fire protection, for protecting charging apparatus from damage by trucks, and for adequate ventilation for dispersal of fumes from gassing batteries. In other words, a special area must be set aside for charging batteries and must have adequate ventilation, as well as baking soda or other material to neutralize any spilled acid. When handling large batteries, a conveyor, overhead hoist, or equivalent material handling equipment shall be provided. When charging batteries, Acid shall be poured into water, but water shall not be poured into acid. Trucks shall be properly positioned and brakes applied before attempting to change or charge batteries. Care shall be taken to assure that vent caps are functioning. The battery compartment shall be open to dissipate heat during charging. Smoking shall be prohibited in the charging area, and precautions shall be taken to prevent open flames, sparks, or electric arcs in battery charging areas. Tools and other metallic objects shall be kept away from the top of uncovered batteries. OSHA says that adequate lighting must be used during forklift operations. Lights in the facility, on trailers, or on the forklift can be used to make sure there is plenty of lighting. OSHA states it must be at least two lumens per square foot. The brakes of highway trucks shall be set and wheel chocks placed under the rear wheels to prevent the trucks from rolling while they are boarded with powered industrial trucks. Wheel stops or other recognized positive protection shall be provided to prevent railroad cars from moving during loading and unloading operations. Fixed jacks may be necessary to support a semi-trailer and prevent upending during the loading or unloading when the trailer is not coupled to a tractor. Positive protection shall be provided to prevent railroad cars from being moved 
while dock boards or bridge plates are in position. While we're discussing dock boards, we have to go to OSHA 1910.30 to determine these rules. Portable and powered dock boards shall be strong enough to carry the load imposed on them. Portable dock boards shall be secured in position, either by being anchored or equipped with devices which will prevent their slipping. Powered dock boards shall be designed and constructed in accordance with commercial standards. Handholds or other effective means shall be provided on portable dock boards to permit safe handling. Positive protection shall be provided to prevent railroad cars from being moved while dock boards or bridge plates are in position. Okay, let's jump back to OSHA Rule 1910.178 and discuss operator training. Only trained and authorized operators shall be permitted to operate a powered industrial truck. Methods shall be devised to train operators in the safe operation of powered industrial trucks. Let's briefly discuss some industry practices on this rule. OSHA does not require forklift operators to be licensed. However, they do require that operators must be trained. Many companies certify their operators by properly training them, then issuing licenses. There is no set training program, no special requirements for forklift operator instructors. Your company must be able to prove what training was provided, who provided the training, and what information was taught in that training. Let's now discuss truck operations. Trucks shall not be driven up to anyone standing in front of a bench or other fixed object. No person shall be allowed to stand or pass under the elevated portion of any trucks, whether loaded or empty. Unauthorized personnel shall not be permitted to ride on powered industrial trucks. A safe place to ride shall be provided when riding of trucks is authorized. Generally, this rule applies to the person operating the vehicle. There are virtually no places for an additional person on the vehicle. The employer shall prohibit arms or legs from being placed between the uprights of the mast or outside the running lines of the truck. When a powered industrial truck is left unattended, load engaging means shall be fully lowered, controls shall be neutralized, power shall be shut off and brakes set. Wheels shall be blocked if the truck is parked on an incline. Here's OSHA's definition of a truck left unattended. When the operator is 25 feet or more away from the vehicle which remains in his view, or whenever the operator leaves the vehicle and it is not in his view, a safe distance shall be maintained from the edge of ramps or platforms while on any elevated dock, platform, or freight car. Trucks shall not be used for opening or closing freight doors. If you're working in a hazardous location, such as with flammables, combustibles, or other similar locations, only those forklifts approved for these locations may be used. The safety platform must be firmly secured to the lifting carriage and or forks. Means shall be provided whereby personnel on the platform can shut off power to the truck. If there is a forklift operator, this requirement is not necessary. Generally, a safety platform used to lift people on the forks must have a 42-inch high guardrail, a midrail, and a safety barricade or screen that is 7 feet high. This screen prevents the person elevated from getting hands caught in the mast during elevation or lowering of the mast. Fire aisles, access to stairways, and fire equipment shall be kept clear. When traveling, all traffic regulations shall be observed, including authorized plant speed limits. A safe distance shall be maintained, approximately three truck lengths from the truck ahead, and the truck shall be kept under control at all times. The driver shall be required to slow down and sound the horn at cross aisles and other locations where vision is obstructed. Other trucks traveling in the same direction at intersections, blind spots, or other dangerous locations shall not be passed. 
If the load being carried obstructs forward view, the driver shall be required to travel with the load trailing. Railroad tracks shall be crossed diagonally wherever possible. Parking closer than eight feet from the center of railroad tracks is prohibited. The driver shall be required to look in the direction of and keep a clear view of the path of travel. Grades shall be ascended or descended slowly. When ascending or descending grades in excess of 10%, loaded trucks shall be driven with the load up grade. In other words, drive up and back down. Under all travel conditions, the truck shall be operated at a speed that will permit it to be brought to a stop in a safe manner. Stunt driving and horseplay shall not be permitted. The driver shall be required to slow down for wet and slippery floors. When using freight elevators, the elevators will be approached slowly and then entered squarely after the elevator car is properly leveled. Once on the elevator, the controls shall be neutralized, power shut off, and brakes set. Motorized hand trucks must enter elevators or other confined areas with load end forward. Running over loose objects on the roadway surface shall be avoided. While negotiating turns, speed shall be reduced to a safe level by means of turning the hand steering wheel in a smooth, sweeping motion. Except when maneuvering at a very slow speed, the hand steering wheel shall be turned at a moderate, even rate. Only stable or safely arranged loads shall be handled. Caution shall be exercised when handling off-center loads which cannot be centered. Only loads within the rated capacity of the truck shall be handled. The long or high loads which may affect capacity shall be adjusted. Generally what this means is that the data plate on all forklifts explains the load capacities at different heights and horizontal lengths of the load. A 5,000-pound capacity forklift may only be able to lift 3,000 pounds at a certain height, so check your data plate or manufacturer's recommendations for different loads. Trucks equipped with attachments shall be operated as partially loaded trucks when not handling a load. This means the attachment may be heavy and the truck is considered partially loaded when using an attachment. A load engaging means shall be placed under the load as far as possible and the mast shall be carefully tilted backward to stabilize the load. Extreme care shall be used when tilting the load forward or backward, particularly when high tiering. Tilting forward with load engaging means elevated shall be prohibited except to pick up a load. An elevated load shall not be tilted forward except when the load is in a deposit position over a rack or stack. When stacking or tiering, only enough backward tilt to stabilize the load shall be used. If at any time a powered industrial truck is found to be in need of repair, defective, or in any way unsafe, the truck shall be taken out of service until it has been restored to safe operating condition. Fuel tanks shall not be filled while the engine is running. Spillage shall be avoided. Spillage of oil or fuel shall be carefully washed away or completely evaporated and the fuel cap replaced before restarting the engine. No truck shall be operated with a leak in the fuel system until the leak has been corrected. Open flames shall not be used for checking electrolyte level in storage batteries or gasoline level in fuel tanks. Any power-operated industrial truck not in safe operating condition shall be removed from service. All repairs shall be made by authorized personnel. Repairs to the fuel and ignition systems of industrial trucks, which involve fire hazards, shall be conducted only in locations designated for such repairs. Trucks in need of repairs to the electrical system shall have the battery disconnected prior to such repairs. All parts of any such industrial truck requiring replacement shall be replaced only by parts equivalent as to safety with those used in the original design. 
Industrial trucks shall not be altered so that the relative positions of the various parts are different from what they were when originally received from the manufacturer, nor shall they be altered either by the addition of extra parts not provided by the manufacturer or by the elimination of any parts. Additional counterweighting of fork trucks shall not be done unless approved by the truck manufacturer. Industrial trucks shall be examined before being placed in service and shall not be placed in service if the examination shows any condition adversely affecting the safety of the vehicle. Such examination shall be made at least daily. Where industrial trucks are used on a round-the-clock basis, they shall be examined after each shift. Defects, when found, shall be immediately reported and corrected. Vehicles with mufflers having screens or other parts that may become clogged shall not be operated while such screens or parts are clogged. Any vehicle that emits hazardous sparks or flames from the exhaust system shall immediately be removed from service and not returned to service until the cause for the emission of such sparks and flames has been eliminated. When the temperature of any part of any truck is found to be in excess of its normal operating temperature, the vehicle shall be removed from service until the cause for such overheating has been eliminated. Industrial trucks shall be kept in a clean condition, free of lint, excess oil, and grease. The best advice we have regarding OSHA regulations is to obtain a copy of the regulations and determine each specific rule that applies to your organization. Generally, OSHA regulations are the minimum standards and many companies go much further in establishing greater standards and requirements for the safe operation of forklifts. Much more training should be conducted than is required by OSHA. OSHA doesn't address engineering principles of forklifts and many other safety standards that should be observed by forklift operators. All we've attempted to do is discuss OSHA requirements. These requirements have been in effect since 1972, and OSHA is in the process of updating these regulations. When these new regulations are published, we'll have another program to update this program. Thank you.